Hi, it's Matt Thomas from King and Eek, and I am back on Sonic Academy. We're looking at VCV Rec 2, and I'm going to take you from zero to synth in just five minutes, or slightly more. Yeah, we're looking at VCV Rack 2. It's software that copies your analog style modular synthesis. And if you're one of these people that when they hear the phrase analog style modular synthesis gets all kind of faint and tired at the very thought of patching cables and moving modules, then stay here because it's actually not that bad. In five minutes, we'll get something basically like an SH-101 together. In another five minutes, we'll make it into a Juno 6. And five minutes after that, we'll come up with something sort of nodding towards like an ASM Hydrosynth in just five minutes, using some very cunning editing for that last one. So let's do it. OK, we're going to start with the SH-101. The two modules I've got in the rack already are a MIDI to CV, so I can use my controller here to play notes in, and an audio so we can hear what's going on. We're going to look at the front panel of a 101. It's got a modulator, a VCO, a source mixer. Let's start with them. A modulator is essentially an LFO, so we need one of those. An LFO, then a VCO, and then a mixer. That's the first half of the panel. VCF, VCA, envelope. VCF, VCA, ADSR envelope. So that's the basic components of a 101. I'll quickly wire those together. If we look on the front panel, we'll see that the source mixer has the square pulse, the sawtooth, a sub -osc, and a noise. So we also need a noise source. Let's just quickly get that in. Noise source. So the noise was in channel four. The square wave is in one. The sawtooth is in two. And we need a sub oscillator. How do you make a sub oscillator? Basically, it's an oscillator running an octave lower than one of the others you've already got. So we use a thing called a clock divider. Clock divider is meant to half the tempo of an analog clock. But if you half the tempo of something so it's half as frequent, that's the same as dropping it an octave. So if I go to clock modulator and go here to the R gate, here we have a clock divider. So if I send the square wave into that clock input and then send it back into the mixer, if I now half the clock, it's going to drop it an octave. So we've now got square, saw, sub osc noise wired into the mixer. Out the mixer, we're going to chuck it into the filter. It's a low pass filter that goes into the VCA, out of the VCA, into the audio. We can hear it there. But we want to control that level with this envelope. So that controls the VCA and it's triggered with a gate from my keyboard. And the pitch of the oscillator is controlled by the notes I play on my keyboard using this vault octave. So this should. Okay, so let's see if that sub osc has worked. There's a square wave. And there's an octave down. So as a real 101, you can mix these as you want to. I want a slightly more analog sound. Okay, now looking back on the front panel, the modulator can kick out a triangle, a square, random, or noise. So we need to make a quick set of switches because that's on a switch, isn't it? We need to take this LFO and we've got to send it into a switch. So let's pull up a switch. And there's one from Bog Audio after. Let's get that. Bog Audio switches. Yep, the eight to one. So I can bring eight things in here and then select whichever one. Just as you do on the 101, you select which source you want. Same here, I can put a bunch of sources in, select them, and then that selected source comes out. So if I want to send the modulation on the 101 into the cutoff or into pitch of the VCO, then I do it from this place here. And then I decide what's going to be sent to it by plugging some sources in. So there was a triangle. And there was a square wave, and there was white noise, and there was random. Now, to get random, I need a thing called a sample and hold module. 
Here's a nice simple one again from Bog Audio. So we've got a sample and hold. So into that, I send some more white noise and the clock can come from the square wave LFO and then the output will go into option three. So, okay, we've got now here is triangle LFO, square LFO, sample and hold, which gives us a random LFO. And finally, we've got just white noise. And if I select whichever one of those, it should be sent through. We need some depth, so I'll put it onto the filter. There we go. Okay, currently it's selecting one, so that's the triangle. Two, square, three random, four white noise. And I can set the depth of that here. I want to set it to the pitch. I can do it here. As well as sending LFO to the cutoff, it'd be handy if I could send the envelope just as you can on the real thing. So again, I need another mixer in this case, because you'll see in a second, I'll put us back on the picture of the 101, that the depth of modulation into the filter here, we've got the frequency, the resonance, we've already got those on our filter module, but then we've got depth of how much does the envelope affect it? How much does the LFO modulation section over here affect it? How much does the keyboard affect it? So in that case, we need to mix those signals just as they're done here. And then we can push up whichever one we want to affect the filter. So we want the outcome from this LFO switch. We want that coming into one. We want the envelope output here. And we want the note I'm playing from there. I'm going to do that one twice because it's a quick way of getting a more pronounced effect from the keyboard voltage. Okay, so if I now pull them all down to zero, welly up the cutoff, and the last thing I need to do, of course, is take away this cable and then reroute the one that's mixing all of them together. So now that LFO is coming into here, the envelope's coming into here, the keyboard offset's coming into here, and then I select how much of each one I want to send into that filter. So currently flat, I want to use the LFO. It can be any one of those sources. Or I want to send the envelope in. I'll just put that sustain now you're here. The envelope's opening the filter. And finally, if I push both these up, the sound gets darker lower down and brighter as it comes higher. And that's it. That is a 101. Turn around in, what, five minutes? So I can save that and then I can go, right, what's the next Roland up? Juno 6, 60, whatever, isn't really very far from 101, just a polyphonic version. So how would I do that? Well, straight away, pretty quickly, I can just go polyphony, please, six voices. And because all these modules I've chosen here are polyphonic, we quite rapidly find ourselves with a polyphonic synth. Now let's have a few quick changes. To make a Juno, we're going to need a chorus. Yep, Juno chorus, please. So the sound coming out of the VCA goes into a Juno chorus, it's stereo, so I'll take two outs from that VCA. Two outs to the audio. Let's get some sustain on there. Let's have a slow attack. Let's get some resonance on this. As with the Juno, you've got the mode one and mode two.
also need a high pass filter, which is another thing we have in the Juno. So after the low pass filter, we have, let's just go with filter tag. And for ease of use, let's just use another VCV filter and it has a high pass setting. Audio output from the first filter into the second. I have no resonance because it's not a resonant filter. High pass. Now on the Juno itself, you can see that the high pass actually has like four switched positions. It's not like continuously variable. It's like click, 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 click four places, but I'm not going to get into that in this time. But if I want to be really fussy, that's what I'd do. We also have fewer options on the LFO, so I'd be trimming some of those off. But why make it less capable when it's already there? Something a little bitey going on. So there we go, we've gone from an SH-101 to a Juno-esque polysynth in about another three minutes. Now you might be thinking, very well done Matt, you did indeed make two synths in ten minutes. I have gone from zero to synth, but you know what Matt, I could already program patches in less than ten minutes. Good point. However, these aren't just patches, these are complete synths. So now I've made these synths, I can now start making different sounds on them and save those as separate patches. And that doesn't take five minutes every time, no, not at all. So here are some patches I've made with our synths so far. So for the last five minutes, I'm going to wrap things up by looking at how you make a much more complex synth. While things like Junos and 101s are a lot of fun, I'm going to aim high. I'm going to do something inspired by, not based on, could be here for hours, inspired by the ASM Hydrosynth. So what's that got going on? Well, first thing, you've got three oscillators. You've got two of them are wavetable VCOs, and one is a standard analog modeling. The whole thing's digital. It's got a lot of sort of analog ideas modeled inside it. So the VCO, while it's not truly analog, it's not truly analog in the VCV either. So we've got VCOs. I can load up whatever wavetables I want to put in there. I've got a couple of nice harmonic wavetables here, and those are just wired up volt octave. Next, I add a VCA mixer. All of these guys are then routed into there. So I've got the output of the two wavetables, and I've got a sine and a saw wave coming in. As you can see, everything is polyphonic. I've gone for a four voice poly so I don't melt my laptop. But obviously, if you've got more grunt, go for it, add more voices. So all this is polyphonic. Then it goes into a filter. I'm using a copy of the SEM, the Unstabile here, from Vault, and that is basically a slightly more wonky old analog sounding copy of an SEM. The Hydrosynth has numerous different filter models. Obviously, you can swap out modules as you need them. I'm using the SEM because it's got this option where you can fade between different filter types, and that's kind of getting towards a sort of idea that the Hydrosynth has in you know, one of its settings. There's several in there. And as I say, you'd need to keep swapping modules to get that going on. So this LFO, which jumped up at the same time there, that is just simply modulating the cutoff with a sine wave, okay? Next, standard synth flow so far out the filter into the VCA. The VCA has got an envelope. Nice, straightforward stuff so far. Then it gets a bit more exciting. What I thought would be interesting is to have a sort of gating effect after whatever I'm playing. So I've put a second VCA after the first one, and that VCA is being controlled by a really fantastic module here called Shapemaster. Shapemaster is eight different LFOs or envelopes, whatever you want to do, they're all looping, you can draw, import loads of presets, etc. 
And I've got a few here. I've got one and two are being sent off to modulate the wavetables. And number three is controlling the volume of this VCA. So effectively, these kind of plucking rhythms here are going to be a gate across our whole synth. Next to it, you can see there is a little fuss going on here with a split and a VCA mix. That's because Shapemaster isn't a polyphonic module. So I had to bring the gate from a MIDI CV into a polyphonic split module, kicks it out as four monos. Those four monos go into a VCA mixer, and whichever gate comes out on whichever note I play, each gate will be sent out of this mix into the trigger input for the Shape Master into each of the one, two, three envelopes I'm using. That's a bit fiddly, but that is how you get around using a monophonic envelope thing if it has separate gates here with a polyphonic otherwise patch. And coming out the far end of it, as well as that VCA boost, we've got a little push on the drive of the filter to emphasize that same rhythm. So moving on. Now after the gate, I've put a debris artist, basically a distortion machine. I've put it just to saturate. I want a kind of rougher sound here. One of the nice things the Hydrosynth does is it models various kinds of analog saturation. So I've brought some of that in here in the patch. And then finally, I've got some effects. I've got a summer because effects modules tend to be monophonic. So I'm summing all this poly work into a single monophonic output. That then goes into the blur, which is a sort of granular delay, and then onto plateau, which is a nice fat reverb. Finally, I've added a couple of these mechanical chaos sources, these chordals. What these are doing is they are sending out into the pitch of the VCOs to create a little sort of analog instability. And that creates the whole patch. Now, what does it sound like? Okay, so that's it, three synths, 15-ish minutes. As I said, we kind of shot through that last one with some funky editing, but otherwise I'll be here saying, I take a cable out of Vault Octave until you were ancient and gray. No, really, it would take another, another 15 minutes. But you've got the idea, you can pause that video and see how it's wired, there's nothing clever going on. Or, don't bother doing that, just look at the link below this video where you will see there is a download with all these presets in. That's it, I'm done, bye. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace.